Hello, welcome back. Today's video is going to be all about the textiles that I have in my home. And I've been wanting to talk about this for a long time, both the textiles and the art that I have in my home. But when I started to kind of categorize things, I realized that I have a lot and it's best described in a longer format video. So here we are. And when I say textiles, I mean blankets, sheets, rugs, kitchen towels, tablecloths, bed linens, all of that stuff. Because I feel like I've collected such a cool eclectic mix of those things. And it's part of what makes me love my home so much. So we're gonna start here in the living room. All right, we're gonna start with this pile of blankets. Sal is here to co-host with me. Um, I have so many of these hand knit or hand crocheted blankets in my home. These are my favorite thing to collect. Oftentimes they're really fun colorways that I wouldn't think of myself, but I'm really inspired by. So I love the colorways. I love that they're handmade and I love that I'm giving them a second life or maybe a third or a fourth life. Um, they are something that I frequently hunt for. So I will look on eBay or in thrift stores or at yard sales or estate sales for blankets. It's one of the things that I definitely love to collect. So, um, excuse me, ma'am. We're gonna move Sal. Uh, this one is was made by my great grandmother. And another thing that I love about these is it seems like they were often used or made to use up scraps. So, oh, okay, I have a little bit of this neon pink left and all of the other colors that I've used to make other things, I'm gonna make it into a blanket. And that sort of natural inclination towards sustainability is really cool and something that I don't feel like maybe happens as much these days. I think probably in the textile crafting and creative world it does. I know I save all of my sewing scraps for, for stuffing floor poofs or, or things like that. Uh, and I know others do as well, but it's just such a beautiful thing. And I got this one at an estate sale, the, the classic granny square blanket. Again, I, I love how probably scraps were used for this, but then there's the consistency with the black and the cream. And so it is driving me nuts, but you're perfect and I love you. Um, but then color pairings that I wouldn't normally choose for my home. Like I'm not usually gonna go for an olive green or maybe a gray, but because they're paired with so many other colors, it just adds, it adds a rainbow to my home. So I've got these three on the couch. Uh, let's get those back folded up sort of nicely. This one I got on eBay, love the neon and the gradient, beautiful. All right, let's move on to other parts of the living room. Okay, next up, floor poof, another granny square blanket. I got this one on eBay. I have an alert set for granny square afghans or granny square blankets. And this one is really cool because normally the connecting color is black, like the one I showed earlier. Hello again, salamander. Or cream. And I love that this one was green. Also love the neon orange. Excuse me, ma'am. I got this at the thrift store, punch needle pillow. The poof is from Berber Stuff, and I will link all of these in the video notes, of course. Uh, this is a Moroccan rug turned poof. And then my rug is from Revival. It is a vintage rug, so you can't get it. I'm sorry, a lot of the things in my home are secondhand, um, but they do have an awesome collection of vintage rugs at Revival, as well as new, but with the same sort of patterns and materials used in vintage rugs uh, for a slightly more affordable price. And I have an affiliate link with them in a storefront where I've kind of curated some of my favorites of their rugs. So you can get a little bit of a discount if you're interested. And I, I of course, will link that as well. Okay, uh, another knit or crochet. I'm not sure on what that is. I'm gonna assume crochet. A lot of them are crochet. Um, that seems to be a scrap blanket. Uh, I got this at a thrift store in Northern Michigan. This one is big and very cozy. I kind of have them on like all arms of the couches, the chairs, just so that there's something within reach always. And then I sit here every morning and do my morning pages. This is a 
I think a Moroccan rug turned pillow. Uh, I got this from a business that is no longer in business, the Good Rug. And then another one, another granny square. This one's on the back of the chair so that when the cats get up there, they're not kind of ruining the velvet of the chair. So just even more in the living room. That is actually the, the total of all of them in the living room. So let's move on into kind of kitchen linens, napkins, things like that. All right, I'm gonna keep doing this on the couch because there's not very much light in the kitchen. So why not use the green couch as the background? So for kitchen linens, uh, one of my favorite things to collect, you know that I'm a collector based on everything in this house, <laughs> uh, is, is linen napkins. So cloth napkins are one of the things that I started doing many years ago to try to reduce, you know, the amount of waste that I'm producing. And since implementing that in my house and starting to use dishcloths and things like that, I've been able to stop buying paper towel, which feels really good because paper towel was invented like in our lifetime. So people got by before we used paper towel and I feel like fabric, you know, you can wash it. I think it's more durable and it can actually scrub a little bit better. So my, again, sustainability spiel. So I'll start with the napkins. Uh, I feel like you can often find these at thrift stores and this is where I found all of my collections of napkins. I have some everyday sets. So I have these purple linen ones and these green linen ones that I use as everyday napkins. So I'm grabbing one and using it. I leave one on the table uh, for the day and then I throw it in the laundry and start fresh the next day. I also have a set of black ones that feel kind of like a restaurant style napkin. And I use those for like bacon grease. Like when I pull the bacon out of the pan, I'll put it on a black one just so that it's not putting grease stains on these. So I've got those. And then for more special occasions, when I have pals over, uh, I love to have folks over for barbecues outside in the summer or for a holiday or something. Um, I don't love to cook, but some of my friends do, and I love to host. So sometimes my friends will cook here, which is really great. Uh, so I've got this floral set, uh, these cutie smaller pink ones, which are kind of like handkerchiefs, um, but they're quite a bit stiffer uh, than a handkerchief. So I use them as napkins. Uh, neon green linen set. Um, and to be honest, I haven't used these because I'm, they're so nice and I'm nervous to get them dirty, but I know the point of buying things is to use them. So that is one of my goals for this year is to use the nice things. Uh, and then I've got this set of colorful ones. Uh, a friend gave me these thinking I would use them for a sewing project, but I actually just use them as napkins. So that's kind of my napkin set. Also, if you can't find the color you're looking for, I have dyed napkins before and gifted them to people. You can find white ones or cream ones very easily at the thrifts. Uh, and then moving on from napkins to table linens, other table linens, tablecloths. Uh, I love to have a tablecloth on. I just think it, number one, collects all of my dirt mess from my sloppy eating, um, but adds a little bit of color to the kitchen and especially outside. I love to have a colorful tablecloth if I'm, I'm hosting people outside. So I've got your classic picnic, but in blue. Uh, this is just a really big orange one that I use on my outdoor table. Another sort of fun picnic-y colorway. Uh, purple linen, which matches the, the napkins classic red picnic. I bring this one camping as well because it feels like a camping tablecloth. And then I've got a yellow one and that one goes uh, it's smaller so it fits my kitchen table. So love the tablecloth. Also, if you're not a tablecloth person, tablecloths are great to thrift as fabric options if you're into sewing and you want a cheaper alternative to uh, buying new fabric. Okay, next, uh, dishcloths. Like I said, I don't like using paper towel. So I have asked my, my pals and family members who knit or crochet to make me dishcloths. And this is what I use to scrub my kitchen and my dishes. And I love them. There are endless possibilities with color. Carly made me these. Uh, my mom made me this one. Carly made me this one. And you can just throw them in the wash like 
regular laundry. It's great. So I have a bunch of those. Uh, I also have some more stuff from my great grandma um, pot holders to grab things out of the oven or, or set a hot dish on. Um, these both need to be washed because I've like grabbed and thrown it back in the drawer. Uh, but these are fun and I love that there are these little plastic hooks. You can hang them if you want. Um, I think stuff like this is fairly easy to find at the thrift store or definitely at like church rummage sales. Uh, I have found a lot of really good linens at um, church rummage sales. Final kitchen linen item is dish towels. Uh, these are both new. Uh, I bought this one and an, a bunch of others that are in the wash right now, um, marbled, hand marbled by a gal who runs Nifich, N-I-F-F-I-C-H. And um, I just really love her marbling work and how she uses colors. So I bought a bunch of those. These are just like the flower sack um, tea towels. And then there's a shop in LA called Sway, S-U-A-Y, Sway Shop, and they do dyeing and they do textile stuff. So they will take donations and rework garments. You can send stuff in um, to be dyed in their community dye baths, which is really cool, giving something new life. Uh, and then they also have a small shop. So I got a few linen tea towels there. So that's my kitchen linens. Okay, now we're in my office. And there is not really a good vantage point for me to sit and show you all of the textiles in here. So I'm just gonna talk about them and then pan with the camera and show you what they look like. The first one is the rug on the floor, checkerboard rug, very, very fluffy. I, I'm not sure what style of rug this is, but this is one that I got on eBay and they have comparable ones on Revival. And I love this one because it's just really colorful and fun and Sal loves to kind of play with it and, and push it up. And basically every morning I come in and I flatten it out again. Uh, and then speaking of Sal, I have this beautiful vintage chair um, that she has taken over as her bed. So I have a couple of blankets on there that I thrifted and she snoozes there while I work. And then hanging on the wall is another vintage rug, kind of like a wide runner. And I feel like with these vintage Moroccan and Turkish rugs, you get these sort of like wider but longer shapes and sizes. And I found that they're really great to hang on the wall as artwork. And so I love to do that. And that's that's something that I've done a couple of spots in my house. So uh, the final thing in here as far as textiles is when I was in Paris the very first time at the flea market, I was really determined to buy fabric because I was like, I can make a project with some special fabric from Paris. And I did buy some. And then it sat in a pile in my stash because it feels, again, so precious that I don't use it. And when I was rearranging my office, which I've done a million times, um, I really felt like I needed a piece to balance out one of the framed pieces of art that I have. And I was like, why don't I just throw that fabric in a frame? And I actually really love it like that. And it reminds me of Paris every time I look at it. So I'll show you that too. Here we go. Sal's chair. Here's the checkerboard rug. Love it. Another spot for Sal to snooze in front of the heater. This is that rug that I said I hung on the wall because it's a wide runner, but how perfect is it in that spot? And then we've got my fabric from Paris. It's just in a regular frame, but looks so good with that print. There's not really a good vantage point for us to be in the bathroom together. It's pretty tiny in there. So I will point some things out and then I'll, I'll show you the linens. Um, I have a vintage tile bathroom, which is one of the main reasons that I bought this house. I think, I think it's so beautiful and gives the home so much more character than just like a, you know, Home Depot special with the tile. And I recently just wallpapered in here to kind of give it that vintage feel. I'm really, really happy with it. And I have been collecting vintage linens that may or may not match the bathroom aesthetic. <laughs> um, but the ones that I put out uh, for guests and hand towels and things like that do match. So uh, let me walk through some of the things in here first and then I will show you the linens. So first I have a, another vintage rug. 
it's kind of acting as a bath mat but it's not used like that i put a towel down every time i take a shower or a bath because i don't want water kind of saturating that tight-knit wool from the vintage rug um, but it looks really beautiful against the tile so i love it in here for that reason I have lots of hand towels and full bath towels that I've gotten at estate sales, thrift stores, church rummage sales, my normal spots. I haven't resorted to eBay for towels yet because I don't necessarily think that I have something specific in mind like the granny square blankets. Um, other linens in the bathroom, I have a Keens shower curtain, a linen shower curtain. I have an affiliate code with them if you're interested. Uh, and then I have thrifted the one single curtain pane and I think it works really well in here. So let me switch the camera angle and I will show you some of the bath linens. Okay, these are amazing. I love these so much. The tags are really beautiful. I don't mind that the edges are frayed and that there may or may not be stains. I think these patterns are so beautiful. And again, I love to give something a second life. I know that a lot of uh, the makers that make like quilt clothing and towel clothing use stuff like this, but I love to use them as they were originally intended, I guess. And maybe if they start to fray so much, I could use them for uh, fabric. Here's another one. Love it. These don't match. I used to care a lot that my towels matched, but I now care more that my towels make me happy. I've got quite a few yellow in this sort of tone of yellow. They aren't the same set of towels, just with this subtle floral design. Uh, some have a banding at the top and I keep these in the bathroom because they think they do match the wallpaper. Uh, so those are kind of my guest towels. And then I've got a couple of greens. Uh, this is that banding that I was talking about. I have the yellow version of this basically, and I love them. Now we're in the TV nook room. So these are the stairs that go up to my bedroom. So it kind of creates this nice little dark nook that is quite cozy. And my TV is on that wall there that you can't see. And that's the only TV I have in my house. I'm not really a TV gal. This serves me well having one in this cozy little room. So part of the thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately and have kind of gotten over in the last year is wanting to have every room in my house be cohesive. I don't feel that way anymore. I think as long as each room in my house is an expression of me, I'm happy with that. Uh, because this room, I really, really struggled with it for a long time and I'm still not quite like done with it. Um, there is obviously red and blue, which aren't colors that I often use in the rest of my home. I tend to use yellows, pinks, greens. But I really like them in this room and I struggled with that for a long time and now I've come to terms with it. Like this is just stuff I like. Your house just has to be stuff that you like and that inspires you and makes you feel cozy and that you are surrounded by things that are an expression of you. And kind of once I accepted that for myself, I let my interior styling kind of run free which is i also think true for personal styling i'm very much in the camp of you don't have to define your personal style i cannot f define my own personal style i really think that some days i want to be a jock some days i want to be a fairy princess some days i want to be something else and all of those are expressions of different facets of my personality just like each room is an expression of my creative mind uh, for my home. So all of that said, this room's a little bit different, but still cohesive because it's all stuff I like. Um, this is a remnant of when I first became an adult and bought into the, I have to buy everything from West Elm and everything has to be gray and white trend. Um, the couch is fine, it's comfy. I like the low arms. I think it's perfectly acceptable. So I haven't gotten rid of it, uh, but I do dream of sewing cool covers for the pillows and the cushions because there's only two of each. Um, sometimes I wrap a quilt around, but Sal really loves to kind of wrestle on this couch and then that quilt gets tossed around. So uh, it's actually in the wash right now, but 
other textiles in this room beyond my dream aesthetic of this couch, reworking of this couch, uh, this Klex wool blanket that I got recently from the Choose app, and I believe it's still on there, and if you're watching this video when it's released, you may still be able to get um, one of their cool blankets. And if you haven't used the Choose app, you can use my code for $20 off your first purchase, but never ever feel pressured. I know I've said affiliate link a few times in this video. I only share things that I'm really excited about, and I don't ever feel that anyone has to use that. I am not encouraging you to just consume, consume, because I have the thing. I think it's demonstrated pretty well that I love to find things that are true to who I am and like full expressions of me and a lot of times that's secondhand but if I don't have something that's secondhand I am willing to share and if I can get you a discount awesome but never feel pressured that's the point but I love this wool blanket it's very cozy Sal really loves it too uh, over here we've got another let's see if she goes on it Yeah, you like that one. Uh, another crochet blanket. This one has variegated yarn, which means that the yarn was dyed to be different colors of yellow all in one skein. So as you create the pattern, it kind of creates this cool design. Uh, and then this one is like your classic, classic blanket with the silky edges. Uh, I had a pink one when I was a kid and I would like fold the edge and like tickle my face to comfort myself before I fell asleep. Um, I feel like a lot of people I know have had a version of that blanket. Um, and then we've got, if you can see the rug, I will pan down if not. Uh, it's just a grid rug from Ikea. I got it in the as is section because it was one of the floor models and I just had the dirty part kind of shoved under the couch. That's fine. That's fine for me. I don't mind if things are frayed or dirty or used because it gives them so much character they have lived a life and as long as I can clean it you know scrub it or throw it in the washer or make it feel like I'm not being dirty I'm, I'm fine with that uh, I like when things have wear because it means that someone loved them speaking of used things another rug hanging on the wall this one is really cool because it really changes shape a lot, um, which is just indicative that it's handmade and hand woven. And there are some little scraps of like different color, which makes me again think that someone used scraps to create this. And that's just so beautiful. I love it so much. So those are the textiles in this room. All right, we're back in my bedroom, location of the first video. And we're gonna end here. I am struggling with this room. I I want my bedroom to be a calm room. I don't want it to be as bright and energetic and enthusiastic as my living room. And I need it to have a lot less clutter for me to feel like calm to go to sleep. And I also still really want it to feel like me. So I have been experimenting with this room over the years. You can see that in the background, I have striped wallpaper, which I still really love. I added that last year. Uh, a couple of years ago, I added this wavy black blob, kind of as a makeshift headboard, like a painted headboard. And I have a lot of neutral artwork up here that I really like from printmakers, from estate sales, just like really cool stuff that sort of fits that neutral theme. But it's not feeling enough like me anymore. So I kind of went through a phase where I'm like, all right, I'm going to dye a bunch of bedding and have it be really bright. But then everything else was neutral, so it didn't really go. Um, I have a bunch of these vintage chenille bedspreads. You can find these on eBay and I buy white ones and then I dye them. I have this color, which is like very neon yellow green at the moment. It has faded sort of up to this yellow color. I probably need to re-dye it with some green to tone it down a little bit. Uh, I have a blue one and I have a purple one. And the purple one dyed way too dark. It has, it's slowly starting to lighten up with washes, um, but none of them really fit. And the checkerboard rug that's in my office I bought for this room to try to think like, okay, if I have a bright rug with a bright bedding, will that go? It didn't really work. 
I definitely move things around a lot in my house. So this rug has been in the office, it's been in the TV room. I'm thinking about potentially hanging it over the air conditioner because I'm gonna get a larger rug from Revival that will kind of fill this whole space. Um, so it's still an experiment and my next step is to paint that wall and cover up that black blob and I think that that will help me feel a lot kind of warmer, cozier in this room. So in that process of building up the coziness, I got these sheets from Keens and they're linen sheets and I am a convert to linen sheets. I was so resistant at first because they are expensive, especially for a king size bed to get the duvet cover, a sheet set, pillowcases, it can be like upwards of like three plus hundred dollars. Um, so I keep an eye out for sales. Um, Keens has a very affordable price and they, they try, the, their business model is to try to keep things affordable but high quality. And linen sheets just like get softer with each wash. And when you get into bed, it just feels like it's like around you and cozy and not stiff like others are. And I don't like the feel of jersey or flannel because I get quite warm when I sleep. And so it's linen sheets only for me. Um, but I also like to change things up. Uh, so I have this set. I have a green set that I got from Etsy that I usually pair with this, this chenille coverlet. Um, and sometimes with this crocheted daisy blanket that I got at a thrift store in Florida with my mother for $5. Beautiful. Someone put so much time into making that and now I get to appreciate that and give it another life. Ah, oh, so magical. Um, I've got a blue and a purple one of these I mentioned. Those are both down waiting to be washed uh, in my laundry pile. And then I've got this quilt that my great aunt made and it's, it's hand quilted. All of this was done by hand. The applique was done by hand. A very precious, precious item for me. Um, so this is kind of the colorway that I'm thinking with the bedroom refresh is what I'm calling it. Um, I recently got some new dressers along the wall that are making me feel like everything is organized and tidy, but I think I'm gonna wrap up there. This this rug also is is from Revival, and another another vintage one. I feel like you can find them in such fun colors, and I love textiles. I think it's such a magical art form. I love functional artwork. How precious that someone puts so much time and energy into making something, and I get to use it. It keeps me warm. It brings me joy. It keeps my feet warm. How magical, I love it so much. Um, and that's why I love to collect these things. So if you have questions about things, I will try to fill out the uh, info in the video, below the video with kind of links to things, uh, but feel free to follow up with any questions and happy hunting if you are building up your textile collection in your home. See you next time. Please subscribe, please like, please comment, share with your friends. Bye.